Hey guys, it's Mike from the Well That Didn't Work crew. For those of you that have been with us or have been on the channel, you know that this is a uh, gaming group and we do a podcast. We also release our uh, games on YouTube just uh, as a little bit more of the raw get to know us kind of uh, background and what happens within our games. We enjoy telling stories. We enjoy you know experiencing the 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 fun of games and tabletop games. If that's for some people, it's for some people. If it's not, hey, more power to them. We enjoy it. We have fun with it. Well, I decided to do something just a little bit different this time, and uh, I, like many other people, have uh, scoured the uh, internets and the interwebs and whatever you want to call them today, and. Uh, looked for custom GM screens. Um, most games are releasing them, but they're releasing these flimsy little cardboard things. And, you know, we, we, we all know that that's just, it, it gets you by, but it's really not, it really just doesn't scream, hey, um, I enjoy gaming, right? So uh, one size doesn't fit all, and you need, you know, 10 different, 15 different GM screens. And, you know, half the stuff they put on them is just generic information that doesn't really work with, with, with the game and with the way you do any house rules, right? So uh, I decided to do a little research and looked on Etsy and started looking for some of these wooden and high quality DM screens and some of the companies that are producing them. And uh, to be honest, I, they wanted way too much money for the product that they were pushing out. And, you know, I figured I'm kind of a DIY guy. I can do it myself, right? Um, there's a lot of techniques that are out there. And I started looking at, you know, what, uh, what different things could be done. Um, and uh, I found one where it was uh, kind of this faux leather technique. And I liked it. I liked it so much, in fact, that I decided that this is what I was going to do. So the rest of this video, and uh, I'm probably going to break this into a two-part series, uh, the rest of this video and uh, the next video are going to go through what it takes to construct a DM screen. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, hey, move on. No big deal, right? Um, the materials will be covered, what tools will be covered, and I really looked at this from a standpoint of I wanted to make this a, you don't have to have high price tools to get this done. So you will see a few things that I have that, uh, you know, I've had around the house or, you know, had in, you know, doing other small projects here and there. Um, but for the most part, you can go to a Walmart store and you can get any of these items. Uh, even the, the cheap store brands definitely going to get you by and you're probably not going to spend more than 10 or 15 dollars on um, any component that is within this screen. Now that said, what I used and what I spent on this particular screen. Uh, there are some substitute materials that you can do, but what I spent on this screen in materials and in additional tools that I may have been missing uh, was probably just shy of around 75 or 80 bucks. Okay, so what some people are going to go out and they're going to charge you, uh, shoot, I've seen them as high as three and four hundred dollars for what I've got. Um, those, those, um, you know, they're, they've got their markup, they got to be able to make their money. I get it, right? But I'm going to do it myself. So the, the key features that I have on my DM screen, and you will, uh, you've already seen the picture here, is that um, it is solid, it's magnetic, it has a metal backing. You can also write on it with um, dry erase markers. Um, you can add your own uh, templates in the background. One thing that I plan on doing in the future is they sell uh, magnetic printer paper. Uh, I can make my own inserts to go on this, and depending on what game what game I'm in, I can put in whatever inserts that I want to put in. So um, it's also closable, and uh, you know just the, the the core things that you would really look for uh, within a D DM screen. So um, without any further ado, uh, I think um, we're going to go ahead and jump into this series, and uh, you know just for 
for uh, sake of you guys not feeling too super pained, there are a lot of places within this where there's some videos that are shot with a cell phone because that's what I had at the time this was going on. Um, and then, um, so pardon some of the shakiness that's sitting out there, but uh, you know, other parts of it where it's long and drawn out, where I'm up at my um, you know workbench upstairs um, doing some of the the interior work and the artistic stuff. Um, basically, with that. I decided that I'm going to run that at uh, three or four, five hundred times speed, so that you wouldn't get stuck just having to sit there and watch five hours worth of videotape. So, um, you know, I hope you enjoy. If you do, uh, please click the like, please click the subscribe, leave me some comments. Uh, this is a first pass at making this, so this is what can happen if you follow these steps step by step and you can end up with this exact same type of uh, DM screen just figure out your own little uh, trim work and design work that you want to put on there alright we'll see you later before we begin the construction phase I wanted to go through the supplies needed and the tools needed I did target this to be done exclusively with tools that can be found in most garages. If not, and you're missing something, then you can go up to a Walmart and get one of the store brand tools for less than $15 to $20. So, far as supplies are concerned, I used a um, 15 32 inch uh, sanded plywood. This can be swapped out to something a little thinner, down to a quarter inch if you'd like to, in order to make yours a little lighter and a little uh, thinner itself. By the time the finished product is done, the coatings will create a um, very solid surface. Uh, with that, I used a quarter inch uh, density fiberboard. Again, if you wanted to, you could do two of those fiberboards instead of using the sanded plywood to make this. Uh, again, you do have to be very careful. These products from my Home Depot came in two foot by four foot sections. So I had to have them cut them down into one foot by two foot sections so that it would match the uh, next product, which is a 26 gauge zinc plated sheet. Uh, that sheet is very, very thin. Don't go for something thick because if you're looking to use the household tools, you want to make sure that those tools can get through that sheet metal. If not, you're going to end up tearing up your sandpaper, you're going to tear up some tools, you're going to tear up some blades. Uh, you can potentially even get yourself a metal cut. And if you've had a paper cut, I'm sure we all have, you're going to understand uh, very quickly that a metal cut is about 10 times worse. With that, uh, I decided to also use a product called Loctite Power Grab. It's in a squeezable tube. You can get this from Walmart, or you can get it from any of your uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Ace Hardwares, uh, any, any hardware store. Uh, that particular product is a construction level adhesive. This stuff is thick and it works well. So. Uh, the next thing you're going to see is a foam paintbrush. That paintbrush was used only to spread that construction adhesive where I needed it to be so that I would limit overspray and uh, limit having glue globs sitting all over the product or project. Last but not least in this phase, you're going to need some uh, dry erase contact paper. This one's a little bit more difficult to find. I had to go to my local Michaels. Um, Hobby Lobby also has some. If you don't have those stores around, you might want to call some of your uh, local hobby stores and see if they have it in stock. If they don't, then you're going to have to order it from Amazon. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have enough to uh, be able to cover approximately uh, one foot by four feet worth of length. Now next we go into the tools. Again, I targeted tools that were about uh, what most people would have in a normal garage, um, some basic things that you would have even in an apartment. Um, a jigsaw. That jigsaw, I had a metal cutting blade and uh, a hybrid blade, which would work for wood and metal. Um, if you don't have those, again, those hardware stores, you can pick up those individual blades for not very much. If you don't have a jigsaw, it is gonna be pretty important that you have one. Um, so you will need to run down to Walmart. Uh, you can get their store brand for about $15 to $20. I think it's hyper tough. Uh, a drill with a large wood bit. That drill is used for you to be able to create uh, an internal bracket. So you just need to be able to tap a hole that's big enough 
that you can uh, put your jigsaw blade in in order to be able to cut inside and create a, uh, um, a frame, so to speak. There's a few different techniques that you can use to do this. Uh, the easiest one that I found and the most expedient was just a drill with a large wooden bit. Feel free to do it another way if you need to. Um, other than that, I recommend getting some clamps. Uh, Home Depot or Lowe's again, they're a few dollars. You can get, uh, get them in various sizes. This is going to help you set your glue. It's also going to help you um, make sure that uh, everything is flush for when you do any cuts. Uh, so that all of your pieces are cut at the same, um, uh, you know, to, to fit. Um, you'll need a ruler and a tape measure. Um, any any kind of construction project that you're going to do, you're going to need to be able to mark with a straight edge, uh, those types of things. And uh, a sandpaper block. I do strongly suggest that you go with a very coarse sandpaper. Uh, the point is, is you're not trying to get this down to where uh, it's extremely smooth, but you do want to make sure that all the product is um, sanded down at the same time and to the same height. Uh, the coarser the sandpaper, the more likely it is to work against the very fine uh, and thin um, sheet metal. Uh, if you uh, get a really fine sandpaper, then what's going to happen is, is that sandpaper is going to tear up on you. So those are the core items that you're going to need in order to be able to get through uh, this particular phase. Um, so let's get started. So first we're going to attach the sheet metal to the plywood. And what you're going to see here is that uh, I've got a little workbench out in my garage that uh, you can see I'm going to kind of go through and show you what the products are. There's the power grab that I talked about earlier from Loctite. You can see the plywood, the sheet metal, and then the uh, fiberboard, and here's the brush. Um, you'll see a few of the tools a little bit later on, but uh, you know, again, pardon the camera work here, guys. This is a... Uh, cell phone that I had available to me at the time when I decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to capture this for uh, for everybody to, to go through if they want to. Now you can see what I've done is I've taken that uh, power grab and just squirted gobs of it sitting onto this uh, sheet metal itself and uh, I did that on the side with the sticker you'll see me point to it here shortly and I'm taking this uh, foam brush or whatever and just kind of smearing it but I'm trying to stay maybe about a half an inch to an inch away from the edges and you'll see that I've got it spread out really well here And what I want to do with the sheet metal is I want to take and put sticker side to sticker side uh, so that those stickers don't get painted um, later on and it throw off the texture or the coating. So now I'm just going to take it to the uh, 15, 30 seconds plywood that I picked up that I had cut down. And I'm going to try and align at least two of these edges to the best of my ability. I want those edges as flush as possible so that when I get to the point where I'm ready to do any additional trim work or cut the screen down to the size that I want, then I can uh, very easily do that. Uh, I'm going to go through right now, you see me putting the as much pressure as possible with one hand and trying to keep the alignment together so that I can let that glue start set and uh, start setting and start bonding. This Loctite you have maybe 15 minutes before you cannot move the material at all. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fiberboard and I'm going to lay it over the sheet metal itself. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because when I put it in my clamps I want the fiberboard to take the pressure and put the pressure evenly across that sheet metal so that the bond is nice and strong.
again you'll see here I'm kind of pointing out the clamps that I just want to be able to put this into the whole rig and you'll see that I have a series of clamps you may only have a couple you may not have a lot if you don't have a lot or you don't have any just find a flat surface and put something that has some good weight to it on top of it that way you can let that uh, glue sit and bond now it is recommended that uh, you, it's pliable for about 15 minutes and if I recall correctly uh, you need at least 30 minutes to an hour for this stuff to get a really, really good cure. Uh, at, at about that point is when you're going to start being able to do any type of uh, cutting or construction or anything else that you want to do. Um, again, I just took my clamps and I went around this as best as I can. My little workbench has two on the bottom, so I wanted to make sure the sides and the top were really, really clamped together. And I'm going to let this sit and cure for a while. Step two is to mark the final shape of the DM screen as well as the midpoint on one of the panels. And you can see I've just stretched a tape measure over and found where my midpoint is and then I decided I was going to go with maybe about an 11 and a half inch high uh, you know, panel so that's where I went ahead and made my mark to, to cut this down to. Now I put that mark across the uh, the top over by each of the clamps uh, off of camera and then um, also mark that center point uh, in a straight vertical so that uh, I could come back and make sure I had everything uh, nice and even. One of these screens or one of these panels, I'll refer to it as a panel from now on, is going to be cut in half and that's going to create those doors that are going to be able to open and close for you on each side. As you can see right here, I'm just uh, double checking the, the marks uh, to make sure that they're at 11 and a half inches high in the center and on each side. Um, and then right down that center point that I marked through. Um, maybe a little difficult to see right now, but you should be able to hopefully see those pencil marks sitting in there. Uh, against the screen. Um, now what I did is I had a yardstick sitting off to the side so I positioned my clamp so that I could set this yardstick across and be right there at 11 and a half, give me a good straight edge and uh, mark directly across that so I know where my cuts are going to go. Everything's marked up now and looks like we're getting ready to move on to the next step. So for step three, we're going to cut that panel. Uh, actually, we're going to cut all the panels if I remember correctly. So what I did is I put everything on my workbench and I put everything together, uh, used my um, yardstick here as a clamped down guide so that my jigsaw would be able to follow it in a good direct straight line across the entire project. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I got a very good nice smooth cut across that wasn't going to be all kinds of jag. So we move on to step four which is sanding. Once that's all cut uh, you'll see that I got a little bitty uh, sandpaper brick uh, you know it's gotten a little dark now in the garage so I apologize for that but um, I'm just taking that heavy grit sandpaper and coming across all the panels at the same time and I'm going to work my way around the entire project just so that I can try and get it roughed into uh, a very exact shape um, for every single panel that there is. The next step we're going to cut that marked panel in half, the doors. So again, I'm going to you know, take and just lock this down into my bench, put it where I can get a good clean cut, and uh, take my jigsaw and go straight across that while leaving the other panel fully intact. Back to sanding, step six. So now that I've got some things cut down, I'm going to go through and sand those edges. And... Uh, one of the things that you may see that's on there already is uh, some marks. So step seven is actually mark up the um, individual panels that you just cut on those fiber boards. 
I decided that the width of a of my yardstick was probably um, the best way for me to go here. So what I did is just lay the yardstick across all the edges and mark out a good solid square so that I knew where on the next step I was going to be cutting out and those uh, those frames will be used uh, later on in the project. And I'm going to do this for each panel. Now I use my drill with a large drill bit in order to be able to um, put a hole somewhere here right next to the edge of the, the fiber board. And you'll see I'm pointing to it right now so that I can take my jigsaw blade, put it in there and cut along these marks, leaving me just the, the, the bracket. So I've cut out the center of that bracket and I removed that additional piece and um, at this point you're going to want to go right back into um, sanding. Um, you're going to want to make sure that all those edges are fairly smooth, fairly straight, um, and do that against every, pan every panel that you have. Now we're going to sand that bracket and clean up the panels. So I've done the sanding um, off camera and now um, if you'll notice there's a lot of dust and, and sanding uh, debris that's left over on some of these panels and some of my work area. So I'm just going to take a, a rag, a clean rag, and kind of wipe all that off. You want to get as much of those particles off as possible so that when you go into the next phase, you're going to get another good, really solid bond with the paper um, and with gluing things back together. So next, we're going to uh, have to attach our contact paper to the metal sheets. Now I found that instead of wrapping the sheets, just doing an overlay here really works the best. So just cut yourself out some sheets that fit these panels and uh, lay them down. If you haven't worked with contact paper, go very, very slow and use a flat edge surface in order to be able to push it down. Once you've got that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue that bracket that we cut out over those panels. So again, we're going to go back to that Loctite and we're going to put it around the uh, edges here of each one of these panels. Attach them and then we're going to clamp them back together. So uh, just like we did in that uh, early step, we're going to put everything back together the way that we need to and put our clamps back together. If you don't have them, use something heavy. Um, this will have to set again for another you know 30 minutes to an hour just to make sure everything is good at that point construction is complete guys so we're gonna need some Mod Podge um, we're gonna need some uh, gesso white um, we're going to need some deco art Americana dark chocolate some uh, burnt umber and some uh, black it doesn't matter which one it is I chose the ebony black um, again here you see the and make sure that Mod Podge is a large product now I also did uh, get some uh, drill bits for this because I'm going to use a, um, uh, a power screwdriver instead of my drill uh, but it needs to be a very very small um, drill bit if you decide to use your drill bit um, this is only to make sure things don't crack. You're going to need a, uh, a little paint mixer, and there's the Mod Podge instructions. I've got some small, you know, half-inch wood screws, some uh, uh, swivels, and, um, you know, a, a lock bracket. I want to secure this um, frame and bracket, so what I did is I used this hand screwdriver and the small drill bit to drill pilot holes for me for each of the screws that I'm going to put in. This is a little bit of a tedious process here, but uh, I wanted to make sure I had at least one in every corner and then uh, one on the each length and side to make sure that it would stay attached. Um, now, I'm gonna do this for each and every single panel. 
One thing I will say though is you don't want to drill all the way through the project. So once you hit that sheet metal, you'll feel like your drill bit's going to stop. Uh, and just as it breaks through that sheet metal is where you need to stop, you need to back out. That's why I use this hand tool instead of using um, an actual drill because I figured I'd have a little bit more self-control. So you're going to see here that I'm just going to repeat the process. And drill bit gets stuck every once in a while and you just kind of have to manually back it back out. It's not a drill, it's a screwdriver. So just make and do. And now on to the large one. Now, you're gonna see that I do again all four corners, but instead of just doing one on each side, the longer side, I'm gonna do an additional three. So one in the middle and then one to split the difference on each side of that. Um, and then again on the shorter side, um, I'm just gonna put in one in between. So now it's time to uh, swap out the drill bit for a, a screw bit on here and um, start driving in these screws. Now one thing that I will say is I was kind of concerned when I did mine to make sure that the uh, screws did not push through very deep so that they wouldn't uh, split anything even though I did the pilot holes. Now in retrospect what I wish I had done is go ahead and take it down um, to where each one of the screw heads was completely flush with the uh, fiberboard. Um, I did do that on one of the side panels, not on this longer panel. And I think uh, in the end it turned out to be a much better product. And if you'll see right there, that's the reason why I'm putting the screws in. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I didn't put enough bonding material on here with the power grab. And uh, when I took it inside to start working on it, I uh, bumped the edge of this and it knocked it loose. So, you know, I, I make sure you, uh, you use the screws. Now, if you do go with uh, a thinner board instead of the 5 sixteenths. So here we are. Now it's time to start doing some of the artistic stuff. Now this is what I am not very good at, guys, so um, just bear with me. I'm sure there's a ton of techniques that are out there that are going to be much better than the one that I use, but I like what I ended up with. Um, so you'll see that I'm taking the Mod Podge here, and uh, I'm going to grab one of my foam brushes. And uh, for the very first coat... I'm going to put a very, very, very liberal amount of Mod Podge across the entire surface of this, um, this board and this panel. Uh, 
So, um, you know, you can buy, uh, they've got some specific brushes for Mod Podge. Uh, I decided not to do that. I just use a, a, a spare little paintbrush that I had laying around the house and it worked out just fine. Um, the point is here is uh, I was just trying to glob on as much as possible. Now for those of you that have never used Mod Podge, um, it's a glue and it's a sealant. Uh, this particular one is um, a matte, so it's not going to be uh, very shiny by the time everything is said and done. Um, but whatever you do, whatever product you put it over, it's going to create a nice little layer over it and it dries clear. I know it looks white, but it does dry clear. And now that I'm watching this, I see there's a few spots that I was a little thinner than others on, even though you see me going back and just grabbing a ton of this stuff and just putting it all over it. Now, normally, Mod Podge takes a while to dry. Um, if you do a thin coat, it's only about 15 minutes or 20 minutes. If you do a thicker coat, I found that it was best to let it sit for about 24 hours. Um, so what you're seeing right now is I just had some tissue paper on screen that uh, I'm now unfolding to be back to a full sheet. Now you crinkle this stuff up into as small a ball as possible. Um, and then you put it to where you have plenty of overlap coming over each corner. And you'll see what I'm doing now is I'm patting this down. I don't want to just use a roller or anything like that. I want to use my hand to pat it down and knock out as many air bubbles and spots as possible. And you'll see that as I move my hands, you're going to start seeing those ridges and that texture pop out of that tissue paper because that's where that Mod Podge is sitting underneath there at different thicknesses and layers um, and it's interacting with those crinkles on that uh, that paper. So this is what's going to create some of that aged and cracked leather look. Now um, also once that part is done you're going to take your panel and you're going to come down and you're going to do the edges this one doesn't have to be quite as thick um, I found that um, as you do the edges you really don't want as much crinkle on them as as you do on um, your visible surfaces um, so I went through the same technique and I patted it down but in retrospect again I kinda wish that I had made that a little bit more flush and used a roller on it um, and once I got the one side done I laid the whole panel back down so that I could work the Mod Podge around the, uh, the rest of the edges here and um, work that paper up. And I'm going to work those edges around. Um, with this panel, that's about where I noticed I had some glue sitting on the table. Um, with this panel, what I did is I, I then folded what I had of the, the, the clean paper, the non-wet paper, um, back around so that I could flip the whole project back over without gluing it to my desk. Now, this is the important part. When you're working with this, um, I did not give this time to dry. I just immediately turned around and I started applying more and more Mod Podge sitting over the top of um, the paper that I had already put on there. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because any of the wrinkles and folds that exist here, I wanted to make sure that um, it helped create a little additional texture uh, because the paper was a little bit more wet. This uh, coat of Mod Podge is going to create a uh, basically like a uh, acrylic or a sealed layer sitting over the uh, edges in the front of this board here. As this dries, all of those wrinkles and all of that texture is going to stick and stay. This is a process that you're going to want to repeat for every single one of these uh, panels. Um, 
Now, I put on some extra Mod Podge, uh, and then I came back and I did the um, interior edges uh, the same way that you just saw me do the exterior here. So, um, this next step is taking off some of this excess paper. You should have some excess that's just kind of laying around. Um, now, if for any reason you don't um, get your... Uh, you know, get the, the screws covered flush enough um, with Mod Podge and with paper and you have some, you know, overlap and those screws become visible, then just repeat that process where you put some glue down, you tear some more of this uh, tissue paper and you, you, you know, cover over those screws just to make enough of a, uh, a lip there that you can't really see it by the time you're said and done. Um, Right now, it's not as visible on this particular panel, um, but later on when you're up close and you're looking at the screen, um, again, this is kind of a learning lesson for me, the first time I've done it, just you know, fill those screws in with their own individual Mod Podge and uh, let it dry, then come back over with a little additional tissue paper. And don't be afraid to have some, some rough edges here, because as you see, I just take a X-Acto knife or a craft blade and I take off some of those rough edges and clean the board up as much as I you know want to down to where everything's nice and smooth and and pretty flush if you wanted to at this point you could also sand that down now um, anywhere that you have wet Mod Podge at this point you're gonna wanna dry it I grabbed my wife's hair dryer and just started turning it up on high heat and coming back over this so I can initially start to set this. Um, again, one of the tricks here uh, throughout this process and throughout the painting process is if you have uh, you know something that is uh, you know like a roll of tape or something like that that you can put some paper towels folded up over on top of then you can take this panel and instead of laying any of the wet sides on it, you can put that paper towel across this um, dry erase surface and flip that whole panel over and just let it sit and dry so that you can move on to working on each individual panel instead of having only one at a time be done. It's kind of a time saver. Now, once we have everything said and done, step five, it's time to prime these panels. All of your Mod Podge, everything should be dry. It should feel like a good acrylic layer. As my wife put it when she looked at the panels at this point, she said, you know what? That's kind of gross. It almost looks like dried skin. Um, so I kind of got a good laugh out of that one. Hopefully you guys do too, but um, we're on to the priming. So this is the Gesso White. Uh, Gesso is a product that's usually used for canvas painting. That's what uh, I found out during my research, but it turned out to be a pretty good um, product. It dries fairly quickly, and uh, with just a few coats, you can get a very nice, good, smooth, even coat over this, and it's not so heavy and thick that it covers in and fills in your texture that you put on with your tissue paper. And as you can see, before I even start putting this on, that Mod Podge did dry clear. So I'm just going to, you know, hurry through this. And you're going to do this for each and every single one of these panels. Just give yourself quite a bit here. Uh, I didn't just dump this particular uh, paint. Um, again, I'm not a painter. So I didn't just dump this particular paint and primer here. Um, 
on top of the surface and then start working it through. I just, you know, used my brush and dipped it in there and just started working it around the entire project here. Um, first coat, I wasn't worried about it being, you know, super even. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I did get uh, anywhere that I had texture, I did get to both sides of the texture. Um, I found myself on occasion having to, you know, blot that sponge against it in order to be able to fill in some of those points. Now, here comes the hair dryer again. I'm just going to give it a quick, you know, uh, once over, you know, uh, minute or two, and you can see that that paint's going to start to set. Um, and unfortunately, my camera is going to start trying to adjust on the back of the hair dryer instead of the product panel. Um, but once I have that base coat done, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this uh, at least two more times. So I should have three coats of this on here to get a very, very good and very solid uh, base coat that will take my paint uh, during the next phases. Now I'm going to go through and uh, you know take care of each one of the edges on these panels and do the exact same thing. Uh, I want to give each one of the edges a minimum of uh, two to three coats so that I can get a good surface that I can work through and paint over. Um, one thing to know about this Gesso product is um, that it takes about 30 minutes to dry. I hit it with my wife's hair dryer to try and give myself a little bit of better working time um, so that I wouldn't have to just kind of break the videos over and over again. Um, I found that if I hit it with a hair dryer between each one of these uh, coats and then did the next coat that uh, by the time I was done with all three panels I was ready to go back to the first one and begin the next stage. So again, you'll see me go through this. Um, the, the drying time recommended if you're just going to set this off to the side is 30 minutes, um, especially with these lighter coats. Uh, you should be able to get through um, no matter what and um, no more than an hour um, with being able to do all three coats because you can do your, your second coat uh, pretty quick. Um, now I had to finish up the one side that I didn't do um, just so that I could make sure that everything was good there and and uh, you know apply my my second and third coats around uh, these panels Now 
Now, you'll see that I'm just spinning that panel on my hand. Later on, um, I found that uh, if I took the Mod Podge and I put a uh, some paper towels or something soft, a cloth, and I put it over the top, then I could just set that on there and spin it very, very easily. Now, I I've moved on to my decorations. I got some, uh, just some random cutouts. Um, you know, I... I am with a channel called well that didn't work and you know we're a gamer channel so I decided I was gonna put uh, the well that didn't work you know monogram across the top of it and uh, you picked up a couple of these decorative pieces and um, decided hey we're gonna go ahead and use this stuff on here they're small little inexpensive packs from the hobby store To do so, I just decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to prime each one of these. I'm not going to go crazy and prime them uh, heavily. Um, they are little balsa wood cutouts. So I just did an individual you know, paint uh, uh, layer for each one of them using the gesso uh, to get them nice and white. Uh, I figured that what I wanted to do with these is... Uh, I couldn't decide whether I was going to go with uh, silver or with brass um, for the design elements. Um, I've seen it done both ways on a lot of uh, you know antique kind of books, and that's really the look that I was kind of going for was that antique crack leather. Uh, so in the end, um, for my first pass, I ended up using. Uh, an antique silver where I mixed it myself and you'll see that here later on All my fixtures are brass so please don't judge I should have gone with some uh, black fixtures or uh, should have gone with uh, you know changing out the uh, the the hinges and the, the locking mechanism down to um, black or taking the the trim work and instead of doing a washed silver do a washed gold yeah, realistically I, I like it a little bit more subdued than what I've got so there's probably going to be some um, some updates done to my screen later on um, but if you watch the channel, maybe you'll get a chance to see some of those tweaks and some of those updates as they get done. Now again, I'm not a painter here, guys. I know there's plenty of other techniques. Um, I could have used some little sticky tack on the back and, you know, done some stuff. But I had these little jeweler's pliers, and I just used those so that I wouldn't get paint all over myself and everywhere. Now we're going to take and go back to the panels that we had sitting there because I only did the uh, fronts and the um, sides of the panels. So while those decorative pieces are drying, so again, we're back to the gesso here and we're going to use our um, you know, foam brush here to ap uh, do the application. Um, some advice go with a smaller foam brush it's a little bit easier to control in this scenario um, now I took my Mod Podge instructions and uh, lined it in here on the first one and 
you know, it worked just fine. Um, uh, again, I wish I had kind of taped this off. I do, during the actual painting phase, um, have each panel taped off. And I'm just going to work that brush and that uh, gesso around each one. And as you'll see, I'm just going to hit this back with the um, hair dryer again, just to kind of get that, you know, coat taken care of. And I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to give myself uh, at least another, you know, base coat here to make sure that I've got a good painting surface to work with. It's getting later in the night, and you notice that I'm not moving that paper around, which uh, is a mistake. Make sure you. Uh, you do what you need to, even if that just means go ahead and tape it off the first time. Luckily for me, I didn't get any paint anywhere. So again, guys, I'm not an artist. Um, I don't do this on a regular basis. Uh, I just saw something that I liked, and I looked at YouTube, and I started researching different techniques and possibilities that were out there. And um, everything that you're seeing right now is exactly what I did. Um, so it was a learning process as well. So while I've got those panels, uh, those edges being dried, I decided to come back and start working on you know the uh the decorative pieces of this so uh my daughter does paint some miniatures here and there on occasion and uh she has um a small little supply of different paints and what i did is i uh, went ahead and grabbed a couple of different ones that she had um out of her learn to paint bone set here um so there was a, a steel uh, colored one, and then there's a metallic silver paint. Um, and what I'm going to do is, um, I believe the technique is called create a, is called washing. So I added some of the steel color here, and then turned around and added in um, a little bit of uh, some water. Um, and the brush that I was using was too small, so I wasn't getting enough water droplets here. So I ended up using a bigger brush and dripping some water in there. And I didn't quite like the color of that, so I went back and I added a, a drop or two of silver here so I could lighten up the color a little bit. Now, with the way that a wash works, um, it kind of fills more into the creases here. It doesn't just act like a straight paint. So I did this because my understanding from what I saw out of her learn to paint stuff, and yes, I'm willing to admit that I read the manual there, um, is that it uh, fills in some of the cracks and crevices. And since this is balsa wood, it's still not a completely flush surface. So I get that antiqued kind of aged silver, and it's really subdued here. Um, and it gave me a really good effect when it's up close. I know the camera can't show it and uh, I don't have that high of a quality of camera sitting here. It's just a webcam sitting overhead. But uh, I really like what it did. Uh, it, I think it came out really good. 
Um, now, one thing I wish I had done is um, come back over this with a slightly larger brush, even you know using the same um, washes here, and then made sure that I did a second coat, but that I did it um, in a single direction. Um, I did have a little bit of pooling on mine. Um, you know, it kind of gave it a little bit of character. Um, but uh, I do wish that I had come back over this entire thing one last time, uh, each of these pieces. Now, as you see right here, make sure you get the edges. Um, one of the other things that I noticed that I had done by the time I was set, by the time everything was taken care of, is I didn't get the interior edges of the details very good. So, um, you know, off camera, I did have to go through and touch some of those up um, a little bit before uh, applying them to the to the final. Um, I got the exterior edges, but not the interior of all that intricate work. Now for the lettering, normally our uh, you know group logo is white letters on a black background, but uh, I kind of decided to do a little bit of a you know inverse here, and um, I'm going to go with uh, black letters, and then I'm going to do a um, technique that is uh, I think. If I'm referring to it correctly, it's just a um, what's called a dry brush. Um, you know, all you painters out there, you might be able to tell me, you know, exactly what it is uh, if if I'm you know giving you the right information. But um, with this black, I'm just going to make sure I get all the fronts, uh, all the sides, all the interior edges done. I'm not worried about the back because that's what I'm going to be you know attaching to the back of the screen here. Um, so you'll see me kind of work my way around this entire thing, but, uh, I'm going to take some white paint here in just a little bit after I, um, try and dry all this and you'll see that in that step, um, in order to try and create kind of this, uh, really nice aged wood look, um, 
and the the white to me felt like it uh, would give me that that uh, effect that I was going for. All right, there it is, now you see it. So basically what I did is I took this white and I brushed it onto the paper towel until there was almost next to no paint left on that brush and then just came back and just kind of wisped it in a bunch of different directions. And you see, it kind of really added some age look to those letters. All right, so while we've got those drying off to the side, um, we're going to come back to our panels, and uh, it's step nine, I, I believe, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start adding our uh, base coat color here. So, um, again, I'm going to need my uh, foam brush to be able to do this, and um, what we're going to do is... Um, this is that technique I was talking about. There you go. It's a paper towel sitting on top of my Mod Podge jar which gave it me the ability to kind of elevate that panel enough and spin it made life a whole lot easier as I was working through this process but uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up using the um, deco art Americana um, dark chocolate here as our base now if you don't want to use dark chocolate, you can use whatever color that you want to use. Um, this time, I'm just spraying some on here. Um, I didn't want to sit there and try and go in and out of that painter's dish a whole bunch, um, knowing that I was going to be putting quite a bit of paint sitting on this. And again, just like when you did the, the base coat of the, uh, the primer, I'm going to try and get this in and uh, work this into all the cracks and crevices across the entire project here. Um, and as I needed more, I just added more um, so I can get this initial base coat down and done. I didn't want to add too, too much paint um, at this point in time. You'll see me adding a little bit here, um, but I did want to make sure that I had enough to get a really good coat um, and have that spread around pretty evenly um, across all that texture. And now that I'm in using that, that brown paint, you can start to see that texture starting to pop out a lot. Um, here at the end of each panel, I'm doing each, each side and each edge, but here at the end of each panel, what I did is, without any additional paint sitting on that brush, I came back and I took that brush over the top of um, the entire project going just one direction. And what I found that that did is it thinned out a few spots to create some, uh, you know, a little bit more aged look. Um, and uh, it, it highlighted some of those, uh, that ridging and texturing that you see across the panels. And I'm going to do this for each panel. Now one quick note here that I'd like to make sure that everyone understands is 
I am not going for um, three layers of paint here like I did with the um, priming. Uh, what I wanted to do is leave it thin enough that I could get some of that lighter color underneath to shine through. Um, again, that was a recommendation that I kind of came across from uh, doing some research on the, you know, on, on YouTube. Now, I've let that dry, um, and I did give it overnight to dry. Uh, as you can see here, I did paint, I did, uh, you know, tape the interior of each of these panels so that I wouldn't get any paint and overspray because there is a little lip on the inside that I needed to touch up. Uh, so it was about that point that I realized, hey, I should have used painter tape earlier. And you'll see it against every single panel here. Um, but I'm going to come back in and I'm going to touch up and, and uh, again, use that dark chocolate to create that base coat layer here um, around all of the edges. Now, one thing to note on the interior of these panels, I am going to do multiple coats on the interior. Um, I kind of figured with what's facing me, um, and you can see it right there, those screws that I was talking about earlier, those are the ones I wish I had sunk in a little bit further, because as I put the paint over it and realized, yeah, they really should have been covered up a little bit better. But uh, going back to the whole paint side, or paint conversation here, um, I am going to use multiple coats here, and the reason why I wanted to do that is because I wasn't looking for an internal texture um, covering as much as there's some bits and pieces of areas that have the, the raw um, particle board that I used um, or, or, um, I, in order to be able to create that framed effect here. So I am going to use um, multiple coats here in order to be able to get uh, that lip and come back over the top of this so that it does appear to be nice and uniform. So the back of the screen is a touch darker than the uh, front of the screen, but um, I, I do think it came out pretty well. Now I will say this, be very careful with your painter's tape. There are a couple little areas that I had sitting in here that uh, I didn't push down very well. And uh, I did get some leakage that I had to come back and uh, clean up in a later stage. Again, just do this for each panel. Now comes a little bit more of the artistic work. This stuff is dry, right? So um, I picked up some of that Americana paint again, um, but this one's the Burnt Umber. So this is a slightly uh, lighter brown, and if you apply it over a solid white surface, you get a little bit more of a yellowish tint to it. Um, but uh, I found that if I just take this um, and I do a, a dry brushing technique, then I can bring out some more of the like tanned leather kind of look 
against the texture. Now, I was slightly afraid here that uh, I was going to end up with uh, a little bit too much yellow, so I did take some of that dark chocolate and add a couple of drops back in here in order to be able to mix this up. Um, I didn't want to have a drastic, drastic variation um, sitting here. It was about that moment I realized that I didn't have any toothpicks or anything to mix this up with and I wasn't going to use a paintbrush to do it. So I had to reach over to my daughter's supply there and take what I needed to. Thankfully she's into painting and has uh, the forethought to do this. Because I'd have been running all over the house going, okay, what am I doing? So guys, what you're going to do is take yourself a paper towel, get your brush, um, dip it into that paint, and then just start painting until it's extremely light. Um, now, first time I've actually used this technique personally, um, watched some videos, but I really didn't go in depth with it. So I figured out pretty quick, don't just keep going at the same spot or you're going to lighten up too much. Um, you know, just start spreading it around and you don't have to go in one direction. What's going to happen is you're going to start seeing that it's going to start highlighting and maybe doing a little bit of a dull out here of, uh, you know, some of this, some of this, you know, paint. Now... As I started doing this, I realized that it was a little bit dark. It was matching what I had already put out there as a single coat. So I grabbed some uh, of that Bones Kit paint and I grabbed some sand color. Um, and just decided to add a couple of drops of that to lighten it up a little bit. And uh, again, back to mixing everything together here. And you'll do what, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to do this, then, you know, I, I suggest you have a couple extra colors laying around, um, you know, in order to be able to thin some stuff out. Uh, if that didn't work, then I would have probably taken maybe a touch of that gesso and dropped a couple of drops of uh, that white gesso in there um, to thin it out a little bit better. But you'll see as I start going through the process now, uh, it should speed up here shortly that it's going to start bringing out some lighter color and creating a, a you know kind of a a good mix to that background and those highlights will start standing out and that leather look that faux leather look starts looking like it's got a little bit more age to it Be careful not to go in one spot too much. Uh, again, you'll see that as I started here because this is the first piece I was working on. Um, before I started thinking about it, going, okay, wait a minute. I just really need to kind of go all over the place here. I'm not trying to repaint it. I'm trying to highlight it. So I start going in different directions and different depths here. And for those of you that uh, are kind of, you know, fantasy lovers here and, you know, you uh, obviously most cases are because you're watching this on a DM screen. Um, back at the point where you're actually doing the um, Mod Podge and tissue paper, 
if you want to put in shapes or put things underneath it, by all means you can. Um, you know, in retrospect, I think that's how they did uh, the Necronomicon. Um, you know, in in a lot of these movies. Um, now, this one is a little bit more of a tricky step here because you have to be very very careful. So I wanted to add some black highlights over the top of the ridges only in the texture. So I'm going to go back to the foam brush and I'm going to use that ebony black paint that I had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a very, very minor amount of paint onto uh, that paintbrush. Instead of pressing into the, the project, or pressing that brush down onto the panels of the project, what I'm going to do, and this was kind of tedious here, uh, maybe there's better ways to do this, um, but I was just trying to use what I had available to me, and I didn't want to make any mistakes. Um, you can see that I'm putting just a little bit of paint sitting right there on that. I use a toothpick in order to kind of spread it into that sponge and make sure that it's really light. Um, I don't want it, I didn't want to create streaks or anything on the project. So I'm just laying it barely over the top and just skimming this. I don't want to put any pressure down and you'll see that it just, that texture kind of picks up where that paint is at. Okay. Um, I did create a few little streaks here and there because uh, I really wasn't, um, I I'm not as skilled with this technique as a lot of people may be that do arts and crafts. Um, so I was trying to get in there and get the different directions of texture and started to realize, wait a minute, I'm not trying to paint this, I'm trying to highlight it again. So um, here at the end, you're going to see that even though this paint was just recently applied, that I'm going to grab that paper towel and kind of wipe back over the entire project. Okay, you can see that one streak line just got in there, and uh, that's really what had kind of concerned me because I could see it there at the table too. Um, so I was hoping to try and come back and blot some of that back out and realize that as I did that, forget it let me just rub this whole thing down and it'll take some of that wet paint off there and just leave some of those higher end highlights so I kinda stumbled onto that one um, and I'll use it again and again through each one of the panels that I'm touching up Now you have your choice. I only did the front of these panels that would be visible to, to my players. Um, you know, um, I started here by trying to do the top and kind of looked at it and realized, you know, this may not be the best thing, but I did want to demonstrate it at least. So um, you can choose to go around each one of these panels and do this, uh, you know, technique across all the, the ridging and rippling. Um, and a few minutes into this, you'll see that I just try and wipe it off again and get a little some of that excess paint. And I'm just going to go and repeat that process with every one of the panels. Once that's done, and you get it to the desired painting effect that you want and it's going to look kind of dull right now right um, but once you get to the desired painting effect that you want it's time to grab that Mod Podge back out again we want to seal all the paint that exists across this entire project and I wish that I had been a little more careful with this. Um, 
I didn't need to use as much Mod Podge as I actually did. Uh, it took a very long time for it to dry. And in some of the creases, I did get a little bit of... Um, I'm just I'm gonna say that the it didn't dry fully 100% clear I did get a little bit kind of of this like uh, subdued white almost grayish uh, texturing in mine so go light on your Mod Podge when you're doing your seal make sure you get it into all the cracks and crevices but just go light on it um, it doesn't need to be as thick as what you're seeing here um, Now, you're going to do this for all of the panels. Make sure you get a good coat, um, you know, a good thin coat here. And you're going to do the tops uh, just like this. And then you're going to come around and you're going to do the sides. Um, and then once that's dry, you can take the panels, flip them over, and do the exact same steps to uh, the interior edges and then that way all of this will sit here and seal now once I have this done I'm gonna hit it with a hair dryer because I realized at that point maybe I was just a little too thick um, so I wanted to make sure that uh, I started the drying process really really quickly um, uh, that way it wouldn't just kind of cake up on me. Um, now, I do repeat this on every single panel, and I did go this thick on every single panel because I wanted to have the exact same effect for every panel. I didn't want to go light on one and then, you know, heavy on another. So after I've done that with every single panel, this is where... I grab out that hair dryer and it's time to start drying. Now I am going to speed this video up here momentarily so that you can see, but you'll watch that Mod Podge as it goes start drying and it'll start drying pretty clear. Now I know you're seeing a bunch of white spots here, and that is where the Mod Podge was very, very thick against some of those ridges and texture. Um, again, this is a matte finish, so it's not meant to have any high shine to it. Um, and uh, I will say, though, that in most cases, in most of those areas, 
almost all of that white did come out. There was a, a little bit of highlighting with some little bit of grayish kind of areas that that did come back. Um, that uh, I do think it gave me again another element to almost like the paint job, where it kind of gave it kind of this really good aged uh, feeling and look. Now this is only uh, 15, 20 minutes into the um, drying phase here. Um, so you'll see again a bunch more of that uh, Mod Podge came out, even some of those white spots. Uh, you still see some of them still sitting there, but they do come out. Um, again, I started, you know, I elevated the panel as you saw just a minute ago. and. Uh, I'm going to come through and start taking care of these sides and sealing those in. Uh, being very careful, especially around those corners, because I want to make sure those corners get uh, uh, not a heavy, heavy coat, but enough of a coat that I could get into where all that folded over texture and layered of tissue paper actually was. Now the back was pretty close to being dry, um, but I, I didn't want to completely just lay it down because Mod Podge is still technically a glue. So uh, I took that small bottle of burnt umber that I have and I just laid it underneath there to kind of lay it at an angle so that I could get the uh, interior lip um, of these panels done and sealed. Now, as you'll see here, I did go a little lighter on this particular portion of the Mod Podge. Um, this is what I wish I had done on the front of the screen. So, you know, it's kind of that lesson learned. First time having done it, messed with it.
all of this is now dried up and you can see almost all of that white is 100% gone it's only when you get really close to the screen can you see that there's a couple of little places in there um, it's got a nice good texture feel to it it's uh, smooth it feels you know pretty decent you can see it on both sides I'm not going to be doing any more painting or any more touching up or sealing here, so it's time to go ahead and pull out all that uh, painter's tape that was put in. And on a couple of the panels, like I said, I hadn't pushed the painter's tape down well enough and it kind of did have some overspray um, where it kind of puddled up underneath the tape a little bit. So I'm going to do what I can to kind of take out uh, some of that overspray and paint and anything like that that uh, got left behind uh, so that I don't tear up that um, uh, dry erase portion um, and, and coating on the metal panels. Here you'll see it right now. Got a small pair of tweezers that I'm sitting there just trying to scrape some of that acrylic paint back off without digging into that paper. Get a little bit of that extra um, painter's tape that tore up as well out of there. I personally was not looking for perfection from myself here. It's just I know that I'm going to be doing some overlays on that. Now we're going to move on into the next step. So the final step here is uh, attaching the hardware. So again, you know, I, I I probably should have used some some you know black or maybe some silver based upon what I had done with my you know front decorations. But um, because we only did a trifold here, most of my fixtures are going to be in and towards myself. You'll see me on the razor blade right here. I did realize as I was getting ready to attach the hardware that I still had a little bit of extra overspray there that I wanted to be able to take care of and clean up. Um, so I'm just kind of knocking that back out of there real quick. Now, what's really important here in this step 
and in this phase, uh, why I'm cleaning some of this up here, is you need to make sure that you have your panels completely aligned. If you had any uh, variations when you were sanding or when you were cutting, um, you want to make sure that they are aligned. Um, Again, one of the things that I found as I did this, because I added the layers of uh, paint and because I added the layers of tissue paper and Mod Podge, um, these interior doors. Um, when you go to attach them, they're going to be a very, very snug fit. So uh, if you've watched this video all the way through, one of the uh, addendums that I would like to make to the construction phase is where these interior doors are going to meet up and uh, be flush with each other. Because you're adding that texture in, do a little extra sanding. And if you decide not to do a little extra sanding, I'd take another, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch off of each one of those panels where they would touch each other um, at uh, when they're closed because although they fit right here as I put everything together and they fit they fit very well um, one of the things that I found that I noticed as I did this process is that after putting on the hardware and the hinges here they snug up a little bit so, although it wasn't, it's not detrimental for me, um, you know, make sure that uh, when, you're, when you're putting everything together, and you'll see I'm kind of fitting everything back together there, um, but when you're putting everything together, if you have that extra sixteenth of an inch shaved off of each side, then your panels are going to fit back together very snugly. Um, another thing that is an option that you can do is on that interior lip of each of these panels. Uh, again, you see it's nice and snug right there. Lines up great. Um, but on the interior lip of each one of these panels, you can use a drill and you can tap out a small area and use some heavy-duty magnets, some round magnets and embed them in both sides of the um, uh, small panels where they come together right there on that interior lip and also um, you could do that against where they would touch the main panel when they're closed so that would give you a magnetic seal and a magnetic lock um, as well besides just trying to use an external all right so you'll see here that I'm making sure that the match panel just flips out to where it needs to be and I'm gonna take and use these little bitty uh, inexpensive cheap brass covered hinges um, to come back across each one of these now uh, just like I did earlier when I put the screws in I don't want to have anything split especially now that I got some acrylic laid down top of this um, which is what that Mod Podge and paint is, it's acrylic based. Lay out your hinges where you want them. Uh, make sure that you get them lined up properly. So that they open and close properly, make sure you get them lined up 
correctly and you'll see here I used a ruler and I just came down a couple inches there and and put it into place uh, I started here by trying to use my pencil and uh, was hoping that I was going to get enough there but as I started to look back in there it's I realized you know what that pencil against a dark background really didn't do me any good So now once I got it in place, I just used the screwdriver with the drill bit on there in order to be able to just start those holes enough that I could be able to see them. And again here, very important that once you hit the metal and you feel the screwdriver go through the metal or your drill go through that metal, you immediately stop here. You now have paint that's sitting on the other side and you don't want to protrude through that paint and mess up your finish. One other suggestion that I have uh, as this you know is going to play out uh, the rest of the video here with attaching these these uh, hinges um, you don't have to just use um, you know a silver or a brass or a black whatever you you know you can take and once you have these hinges in place and you, they're where you want them to be. Um, what you can do is you can use the technique that you saw earlier, or the techniques that you saw earlier, and you can put a little Mod Podge over them, and you can build up some tissue paper over that, and then just, you know, come back in with some paint, uh, and paint in whatever color that you want to paint in. You can cover up those screws, you can do anything that you want to do. You know, some people are perfectionists. Um, I prefer to go for a little bit more of a, uh, you know, it's functional approach. I can say that laughing because, you know, I'm, I'm going through and doing a whole bunch of artistic stuff on this that I normally don't do, but um, again, you can cover over anything that you want to cover over here. Um, I would suggest, you know, making sure that you don't get any paint within the hinges themselves. Um, you know, uh, another option is, is that you can um, take a paint pen itself and come back over and darken up anything that you want to um, with your with regards to your hinges or hardware whatever you decide to use And we're going to speed this up, but you're basically going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Oh, and for those of you that are wondering what just happened, I was actually looking for a screw that I dropped down into the carpet and under the floor, which, um, you know, just like that damn sock fairy in the dryer every, you know, couple of weeks, that screw was not able to be found. So it was a good thing that I had those other brass screws on hand. I'm sure a few weeks from now I'm going to be back up here and 
I'm going to be doing something else in my room, my, you know, my, my daughter's art studio or, you know, my reloading room here. And I'm sure going to be back up here and I'll step on it and, you know, let out some kind of curse word <laughs> as I pull it out of my barefoot. But, um, it's always nice to have a few extra uh, little components on hand, and that's why that uh, pack of screws came in really, really handy. Yeah, it was about this moment that that's when I realized maybe I should have taken off that sixteenth of an inch on each one of these. So, it's not a big issue for me. Um, you know, I just kind of bend it and tweaked a little bit and put a little pressure here and there. And, um, you know, I may, in the long run, come back and use some sandpaper and then paint, uh, you know, uh, repaint those, uh, you know, those those edges right there. Right here I'm attaching just my locking mechanism and it's just a basic brass little latch lock. Um, and as you can see I just tried to center this thing up. You can do, and, and I like to tease my wife about it because she's more the artistic one here, but um, you can do the artsy fartsy stuff if you want to add you know straps or books you know book that that leather bound book um, strap or buckles or anything along like along those lines that you want to in here um, but I'm gonna leave that up to you to figure out uh, I just wanted a quick and simple way that I could latch this closed uh, so that I wouldn't have things falling apart or you know coming apart when uh, I'm transporting it to and from either the game store or you know when uh, we're over doing our our game recordings at uh, you know the the studio over at Percy's house. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you get a good fitting, um, you know, that, that your latch is going to open and close and, and work properly. Um, you know, I'm using a slide latch. Uh, you know, you can use a, a clip or a hook or you could put several of them on here if you really wanted to. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of going for the quick and simple dirty look here. Um, but the edges of this where your screws would attach and go in, you know, you can cover those over, you can paint those over, you can do any number of things that you want to. Um, as you can see, I didn't use a very heavy latch. It's just, it is what it is. So now we're into the, uh, final steps here and, 
what I'm looking to do is take all of my, you know, aged and, and uh, decorative stuff and on the center of the screen, you can see that I, I, I kind of flipped the video a little bit here. I entered into this and I was, I knew I wanted to use these elements, but I didn't have a plan on where I was going to place some things. So you're going to see me moving some stuff around and trying to figure out where I want to do um, certain design elements and where I want to place some stuff. There is a super glue that's made by DAP. And it's called DAP Rapid Use. Uh, this stuff is, again, you can get it at Walmart. It's pretty inexpensive, a couple dollars a bottle. And who doesn't need super glue? Once I have everything figured out where I want to put it all and what design elements that I want to go through and, and work with, use that super glue on the backing of those. So now it's time to officially decorate this screen. Off camera, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out where I want things. I know that these uh, pieces here I was going to use almost like decorative bookends and uh, place them up in the corners. So, you know, as you see right now, I'm just kind of doing a, a general layout of what I want things to look like. Again, you know, kind of lost a little bit of footage there, but uh, what I ended up doing is that ruler that you see up top, I used that to space uh, the WTDW, um, you know, uh, letters out evenly and get them glued and attached where I wanted to uh, with a, you know, standard distance off the top. And then I glued in each one of the, the corner pieces there. And as I was moving stuff around the screen, I took those uh, circular discs that you see, those design discs, and I had pushed one up into the corner, and I was like, oh, hey, wait, I like the way that that looked. So um, as opposed to just trying to fill in space in the middle of the screen and do things, um, all I did was just take and, um, you know, push them over into that space and glue them in where they were at. And I kind of liked the way that that, uh, that looked and, and um, decided to leave them there. Um, now, don't use a whole lot of super glue here, guys, because you don't want to have it glop up and, and, you know, get stuck to your fingers as you're trying to hold stuff in. Have paint peel and pull and, and come off. So just put it in place, hold it for about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, and you should be good to go.
Now, there I was playing with some uh, other pieces that came within the packet and just decided, you know what, I'm going to leave that center open. With each one of these um, elements that I just added on there, none of them have been sealed. So you see that I grabbed the Mod Podge and I came back and made sure that I got into all the cracks, crevices, all the edges, and created that, that seal and that acrylic layer sitting over those so that um, it would also give it a little extra strength and rigidity um, to hold against the the DM screen itself. Now with all that done, um, you know, I, I was letting things dry and I realized that uh, I still hadn't attached two screws to my uh, latch. So this is what you're seeing right now is uh, I, I came back and attached those two screws. Um, one of them was giving me a little bit of difficulty. It really just did not want to go in and um, I end up kind of getting to that point where I'm like, okay, wait a minute this is annoying so I have to lay the whole project back down in order to be able to to finish it up but it's better that I caught it now than you know later on when I realized hey I tried to put the latch in and the latch pops off
Now I guess I'll tell on myself a little bit right here. Those uh, that screw that's giving me the problems. Um, unfortunately, some uh, Mod Podge had uh, fallen or gotten into that screw, uh, that screw head. So. Um, I had trimmed it down in order to be able to make sure that that uh, screw would fit without hitting any of the, the metal panels behind it. So now I'm having to sit here and kind of dig it out with a razor blade so that I'm not having to go back down and hit it with a Dremel tool or sand or grind or do anything funny to, to the screw itself. Um, but again, if you do decide to use any type of latching material, um, I only recommend that anywhere that that lip is at for the panels is what you can drill through in order to be able to work and make it uh, attach. Um, if you have to do anything where you come back uh, deeper into the project panel where it would get into the um, uh, touch the metal, then what I would suggest then is uh, you know, a few dollars for a Dremel tool and, um, you know, 10 or 15 bucks for the store brand up at Walmart. Uh, they come with some grinding pads and you can use that grinding pad to take, uh, some of those screws down just far enough to where it won't, um, push through and push into the metal itself. Um, now because that stuff is drying, you just see right there that I took and, and put, you know, some, some paint canisters down or some uh, paint tubes down so that I can get down in there and um, you know not have that that uh, glue sit against my you know paper backing that's on the work desk there and let's see I think that screw finally goes in there So, I want to tell everybody thank you, and I appreciate you for uh, stopping by and uh, taking a look at this project. If uh, you know you like what you saw, you like the step by step, you know, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Uh, for those of you that are just here for this, uh, I suggest you stop by our uh, gaming content and uh, listen to a, a bunch of grown men be uh, smart, Alex, and uh, have some fun at the gaming table. And uh, as we at the Well That Didn't Work crew like to put it, keep on adventuring.